Right, talking of electricity, the University of Johannesburg has proudly revealed its new electric vehicle buses. They are the latest innovation on UJ's ongoing efforts at going green in accordance with the UN's sustainable development goals. The buses have already started transporting students between various campuses. To discuss this further, I'm joined by University of Johannesburg's uh, Vice Chancellor, Professor Letokwa Mbedi. Thank you very much, Prof, for your time here on ENCA. Just uh, firstly, uh, tell me how long these buses have been running now. Uh, good afternoon, Masiho, to you and your viewers. Uh, these buses um, uh, were launched last week, Friday, but uh, uh, viewers uh, must note that uh, we, have, we ran a pilot before to see how they work. So we ran a two-month pilot, and now we are happy about how these buses operate. And uh, they've been uh, in the works you know, for more than 18 months. So, yes, to answer you, they've been launched since uh, last week, Friday, but we had pilot buses and we're happy with how they operate. Mm. How is this working? You know, I know you are going uh, towards just transition. You are going towards uh, MRI for, um, or rather, fourth industrial revolution. But how is this working in a country like ours where we're not getting power from the only company that is supposed to give us power? Yes, that is a good question, Maseho. Um, but if we allow the challenges we are facing as a country to stop us from innovating, then we won't move forward. I'm glad to uh, let you know and the viewers at home that at the University of Johannesburg, 15% of our energy comes from solar. And we are going to increase that. So these buses are charged uh, using renewable energy. And as a result, we don't worry a lot. Of course, we worry that we are having challenges with uh, electric uh, uh, electricity supply. But uh, to answer you, these electric vehicle buses are charged, you know, using solar energy, which comes from our 15 percent, you know, solar uh, energy. Mm, so I guess you had to go through uh, via um, rather your independent uh, power producer to be able to fuel these buses. Are you looking at having this, uh, you know, having a bigger fleet and uh, stopping with the normal type of buses that use your diesel and petrol? Yes, uh, resources permitting, we're going to increase these buses. At the moment, we've got two. The aim is to re replace the entire fleet, you know, with ele electric vehicle uh, buses. We, we really want to do our part as a university in terms of ensuring that, um, you know, we, we, we reduce our, our carbon uh, footprint. Mm. Exactly which campuses uh, does the bus go to? Um, I imagine Kingsway, but from there, where else? Yes. Uh, um, as, as viewers may know, we have four campuses, uh, mm. our Durenfontein campus, our Soweto campus and Banting Road campus. Of course, you have mentioned the Kingsway campus. These buses will service all our campuses. And we, we have done our homework. Uh, one, one route you know, covered you know, by this bus, uh, it covers 200 kilometers. And uh, these buses, you know, they can do a range of 350 kilometers. So we are really uh, good. We are covered there. Mm. And does it help you save funds, for instance, in terms of this unstable petrol price that we have here in South Africa? Does it at least have you saving on that term, <laughs> Definitely. In the long term, this is going to save term because these buses don't come cheap. But, you know, we don't only look at saving uh, uh, funds or money. We also look at our impact on, an, on the environment. And if we save mm -hmm. the environment and at the same time save money with this uh, uh, rising uh, diesel prices, then, then, then we are good as an institution. And we want to encourage our uh, PA institutions, you know, sister institutions to also join us and other companies, you know, in this uh, green revolution. Mm. A lot of people have been saying that uh, we are uh, going the wrong route by uh, wanting to have just energy and transition uh, only to that. Obviously, an agreement uh, that was um, agreed upon by many governments at, at uh, COP, uh, uh, COP uh, back about two years ago, I think. That was the agreement about two years ago. A lot of people are saying we shouldn't, as South Africa, actually move to that because we are not fortunate enough like European countries to be able to move completely to that. What do you say in response? Yeah, look... Personally, I think once we start by looking at the problems, we, we won't move. There are enough challenges that we are facing as a country, but we have to move progressively, step by step. Look at us. We are starting with two buses, and, and soon we'll be adding you know, uh, another bus and so on, and eventually we'll get to where we want. I think we should look at a mix you know, of um, 
of energy sources you know we've got solar we've got wind and so on obviously we cannot do this overnight we are not a rich country but we need to have a concrete plan in terms of where we want to go and with this efforts at, at the university of johannesburg we hope that other people will be inspired to see that you know progressively we will get to where we want to 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 be Mm -hmm. I imagine that an electric powered bus would be more expensive than what we normally have right now. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I can <laughs> tell you these buses are not cheap. But if you look at other savings, you know, from diesel, um, you know, the service they require, because remember, there aren't too many moving parts, you know. Mm -hmm. You change your brake pads, your oil, you know, brake fluid, then you're good in comp comparison with internal combustion engines. So we're going to save there, you know, and tires. So if you look at this, because this is a long-term thing, uh, we're going to save. And as I said, saving our planet and saving in terms of cost, then this is really a good, uh, a good deal as far as I'm concerned. We must look at the long-term uh, investment and long-term returns. Uh, using the same approach, you know, if you look at, um, you know, the cost of installing solar panels uh, and so on, these things are expensive. But mm. if you look at the long-term returns, you know, benefits, um, you know, uh, within a, a certain space of time, then you, you, you recoup all the, 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 the cost and then you get free energy. So one must have a, really a, a long-term view when it comes to, to, to the, uh, this type of things. Mm. Tell me about the type of partnerships that uh, saw this project become uh, as successful as it has been so far. Yeah, um, we, we have a service provider that runs our inter-campus uh, bus service. Uh, initially, when we wanted to test and see how this uh, electric vehicle buses will function, uh, we had uh, um, uh, buses that were provided by our, our service provider, and, and we tested them for a couple of months and we were satisfied with this. And even now, you know, uh, these buses, uh, um, you know, are charged at the depot, and, and, uh, and also on campus, we work closely with our service provider. We've got uh, drivers that are trained to operate this, and they will be part of that fleet, you know. So, so there is that partnership that is, that is ongoing. Hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much, Prof, for your time here on ENCA. Uh, good luck. Hopefully the fleet becomes more and more. And at some point, maybe other universities will also join. But of course, it's uh, quite difficult in a country like ours where ESCOM is unable to give us power. Sometimes we have no power for 10 hours in a day.